Hello, everyone, and welcome to Noon Renewal. My name is Reverend Philip Stonhaus, and uh, this is the Noon Renewal for St. Matthew's Church. Every Monday, we go through the Book of Common Prayer, and every Monday, I take you on a virtual tour of a church somewhere throughout the world. And so, do you know which church this is? It's somewhere in Canada. It's somewhere in Montreal. It's a Catholic church. It's uh, Notre Dame. If you've never been there, it's a beautiful church. Hope you get the chance. Our service of uh, Book of Common Prayer will, of Morning Prayer, will begin on page four or page 60. Um, and I'll start with some opening verses before starting at the top of the page. Okay, so let's take a few moments just to center ourselves on God. Welcome him into our hearts. Knowing that he's with us, that he's present, that he's guiding our thoughts, our hearts, and our lives. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. To the Lord our God belongs mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us. So now at the top of the page. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice to the throne of the heavenly grace. So now we say together at the bottom of the page. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesu our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. The glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given us power and commandment to, to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. 
let us say together the vanity on the bottom of page six. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands have prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is the Lord, our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our readings today are the 11th Sunday after Trinity, you find them on page 234 or on page 290 of your digital books. Our epistle reading is taken from the first letter to the Corinthians, actually the second letter, but uh, we call it the first because we don't have the real first letter. So it's the first letter from the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Peter, then by the twelve after that. He was seen by about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present. But some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born of, out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in with me. Wherefore, whether whether I or they, so we preached, and so ye believed. Here ends the first reading. The gospel reading today is taken from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, 18th chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Jesus spake this parable unto certain which trusted in them. Jesus spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, idolaters, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, will not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast, saying, 
God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. The word of the Lord. Two very interesting lessons today. Um, whenever I think of this passage in 1 Corinthians 15, I often think about uh, proof, the proof of our faith. Paul was talking, was writing this probably around 50 uh, AD. Um, so this was not long after Jesus died. And one of the things that he is very clear about is that a lot of people are still alive that saw Jesus's resurrection. He goes through the order, you know, um, first Jesus appeared to uh, seen by Peter and then by the 12. And after that, he was seen by above 500. And so at this time, as Paul was saying this, there would have been a lot of people still alive that would have seen Jesus raised. If it was untrue, then people would have stepped forward. If it was true, there would have been plenty of people throughout the known world at this time, which was the Middle East, that would have acclaimed it. 500 brethren or so, or, or above. That's a lot of people in this known world at that time. So there would have been a lot of people that would have seen Jesus raised from the dead. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the story, A Case for Christ, but this is a story all about a man who um, was trying to prove uh, that the resurrection wasn't real. And the more research he did, the more he realized that the proof is there. This was one of those proofs was that if there was this many people that saw him, then that word would have been getting out. There would have been people continuously acclaiming to it. And so in this moment, Paul is saying, not just I, who never actually saw the raised Jesus, except as he appeared to me, there's also dozens at least who have said the same thing to you. And he says that, whether it I were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. And so this becomes a question for many of us. You know, a lot of us believe, and that's really good. But the reality of Jesus' resurrection is so profound and so powerful that are, are we willing to believe in the testimony of so many who have been changed, who have seen their life completely uh, restored <laughs> through Christ. In a way, they've experienced the resurrection. Maybe even a light way, but to come, it will be even more. And Paul's life was utterly changed. He says he's the least deserving of all the apostles. And why? Because he was persecuting the church. He was an enemy of the church for so long. And so often uh, in our lives, we can be an enemy of the faith too. I remember a time in my life where um, I might not have been an enemy of the church, but I sure wasn't helping. Even when we're in the church, we might not always be helping. We might not always be bearing God's image right. And so we might be proclaiming the opposite sometimes, fighting against God. But now, as Paul says, the grace of God can work in us. The grace of God can do marvels through us. It's not us, but it's God's power in all of its wonder and splendor that will use us. But there's an important part here. Paul approaches it with humility. 
Sure, there seems to be a moment where he's bragging, you know, I've done more than all of them. But he says, it's God within me that's done it, not me. And I am least of all the apostles. Humility is so important in our faith because if we are lifting ourselves up, if we're making it all about what I can do, what I have accomplished, then we're not really letting God use us. We're not really letting God work through us. So that humbly approaching God to let him use us and work through us, and then to partner with him, as Paul does, is essential. And that first step of, of humility is that tax collector, or the publican, as they say in our reading. That humility of coming before God and recognizing that, God, I am a sinner. I'm not worthy to come before you. And yet what God does is he redeems us. He reconciles us to himself. He justifies us. It is like as we bow our heads before him, as we go on our knees unwilling to look up to him, it's like a father or a mother lifting us up, looking us in the eye and calling us beloved. You are my child, in whom I am well pleased. And that starts by recognizing how much we need him, how broken we are sometimes, and then to allow him to guide our way. Tax collector, I mean, the Pharisee was so sure of himself that he didn't think he needed a God. Look what I can do, look what I have done. But it was the tax collector who trusted more in God and the great wisdom, power, and righteousness of God that was truly redeemed and justified. So let us believe, let us be humble, and let us move forward that God's grace may move through us. Amen. Now in light of the good news, the good news that Jesus died for us so that we might redeem, be redeemed and justified. Let us say the creed together on page 10 or on page 66 in the middle. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and ever more mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us. 
Take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. O God, who declares thy almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Collect of peace on page 11 or on page 67. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now together, the collect for peace, for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always what is, that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bottom page 13 or 69. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator. Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all humans, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy way known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any way afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. And so we pray for all those who have requested our prayers at this time, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their suffering and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. Particularly, we desire, we offer our thanks for uh, things in our heart at this moment. Family and friends, for technology which connects us. for sustenance and life in this time, health, for peace, your faith and your grace, your graciousness, Lord. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, 
not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And let's say the prayer of St. Chrysostom. And I believe in this prayer we're together, even though not physically. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's always a joy to be with you, even if just digitally. Um, I hope that one day soon we get to see each other. Um, it's We're planning on opening on September 13th. So please, uh, we'd welcome you then. Um, and hope to see you. But of course, we will still be doing digital worship as well. And so uh, you're welcome to join us either way. Let us continue to praise God as we go out of this place. Thank you for joining us and feel free to look back on more on YouTube. I'm Reverend Phillips Sanos, and this is St. Matthew's Church. God bless everyone.